Friends, humans, Disney fans, lend me your ears. Today we're going to be looking at a Disney dining plan practical application. Watch as I show you the ins and outs of what it's like to plan your advanced dining reservations and count those credits. Let's plan. Everybody, Melanie here from Lend Me Your Ears. I cannot wait for today's video because I am going to share with you my own personal plans for our next family vacation to Walt Disney World. I'm so excited about our trip. Our kids haven't been to Walt Disney World in three years and we are all going to experience new things and have new adventures. And one way we're going to experience new things is eating at some new places that we've never eaten at before. We will be dining on the standard Disney dining plan. This is something that as a whole family, we've never done before. My husband and I have done it once when we went just the two of us, and we loved the freedom it gave us to order whatever we liked and splurge a little bit. We liked it so much that we decided that the next time we go as a family, we're definitely doing the Disney dining plan. Now, if you missed the first video where I described the ins and the outs of the different plans, be sure to check that one out too by clicking here. There will also be an option at the end screen of this video to take you to that video. It'll answer most, if not all, of your Disney dining plan questions and whether or not the plan is right for you and your family. So before we get into which dining reservations we will be making for our next trip, I wanted to give you a visual of exactly how many credits we will be receiving. We will have three adult plans and two child plans and we will be staying for nine nights. And as I mentioned in the other video, your credits are per person per night of your Walt Disney World Resort stay, not per day that you're there. That's important to know. So we will be doing the standard Disney dining plan, which includes two snack credits, one quick service credit, and one table service credit per person per night of our stay. That's 18 snacks nine quick service meals, and nine table service credits per person for our trip. I have all of this shown on these five different plates right here. Now, I did make the table service palms the same color for table service, but for our two younger kiddos, I gave them smaller palms because at the table service restaurant, they must order off the kids' menu. The quick service credits don't matter. The kids can order the larger portions there. But for table service, they have to do kids' meals. So these five plates denote how they decide how many credits you get for your trip. But in practice, using your credits, it really looks more like this. You basically just have all of these credits sitting in your account and it's up to you how you want to use them. Little Bobby doesn't have to eat two snacks every day. They won't be wasted if he doesn't. He can eat one snack one day and then three the next. Or he could eat five snacks one day and none for the next three days. Or Bobby and Susie could share a table service meal one day and you'll have an extra table service credit for later. And if you're wondering how many credits you have left, They'll be denoted at the bottom of every receipt you're given for a meal, or you can always reference them on your My Disney Experience app as well. Make sure to download that one. So without further ado, let's break down my options for dining, which I will hopefully be able to get reservations for when I make them next month. Now I'm not gonna go to the trouble of using all of these palms for the breakdown, so I'll break it down for you by just one person's credits. And since I'm the person doing this video, let's assume that person is me. Um, let's see, let's change things up a little bit here. Oh, great. So, day one. We will arrive at our resort via the Magical Express where we will use one table service credit to eat at the table service restaurant on site at our resort for dinner, which happens to be Sebastian's at the Caribbean Beach Resort. Easy, simple, relaxing, evening for our first night there. And then maybe we hit the pool. So that's it for day one. Moving on to day two. Hollywood Studios. We'll be at Hollywood Studios twice this trip and the first day we will be covering everything in the park that is not Galaxy's Edge. We'll do Galaxy's Edge later in the week. So this day what we'll do is we'll grab a snack for breakfast, then we'll head over to Woody's Lunchbox for lunch, and then for dinner we will be eating a quick service meal somewhere within Hollywood Studios. This could be Backlot Express or ABC Commissary. I'm not sure, we'll pick that day. It's nice to be kind of flexible. So there you have it, day two. You may be wondering why I'm only using 
two quick service credits in one day? Well, it'll all add up at the end, I promise. Okay, moving on to day three, Magic Kingdom. We will also be going to Magic Kingdom twice on this trip because there's just so much to do and see. Now, we're gonna grab a snack for breakfast. That'll be a snack credit. Then, we love Columbia Harbor House at Magic Kingdom. It's our favorite quick service option there, so that'll be for lunch. And then, we'll leave the park by boat and head on over to Fort Wilderness Campground where we'll enjoy the hoop de doo review. This is such a fun dinner show that they offer at Fort Wilderness, but it is important to note that it is a two table service credit per person meal. So, one and two, that's day three. The next morning, we head over to Epcot where we'll be having breakfast at the Garden Grill. This is a fun character meal with Chip and Dale and friends and they have Mickey waffles, which makes it totally worth it if for no other reason. And this place is really cool. It's in the land over at Epcot and they serve you things that they've grown there and the whole place rotates as you eat. We've never actually been there before and I'm really excited about this one. Then we'll be spending the rest of our day either at Disney Springs or at our resort. We'll fill up the rest of our day with two quick service offerings. Maybe the polite pig at Disney Springs or chicken guy or back at our resort, we have a little bit of flexibility here, which is nice. So that's day four. And moving on to day five. This day will actually be my husband's birthday. And this was the park that he requested, Animal Kingdom. So we'll do a snack credit again for breakfast and then head into the park. Now, both places we're eating at here are return favorites for my hubs and I, but the kids have never eaten it either. So still new for some of us. We have Satu Lee Canteen in Pandora for lunch, which is a quick service credit. And Tusker House for dinner, which is one table service credit. Tusker House is a really delicious buffet option that is also a character meal where you get to meet Donald, Daisy, Goofy, and Mickey. We loved it and we cannot wait to go back again and take the kids this time around. So, day six, we're going back to Hollywood Studios. And this day is a little bit weird, so bear with me. Snack again for breakfast. Shocker, right? We're not huge breakfast eaters, so this is going to work well for us again, but I know some people prefer using a quick service meal every morning for breakfast, a snack credit for lunch, and a table service for dinner. So everyone does it a little bit differently. This is the day we will be going to Galaxy's Edge. Now, I'm going to need to be a little bit flexible here because I've heard that they may be assigning everyone specific times to go into this part of the park. However, not sure if they'll be still doing that when the time comes for us to go. It's months away. So hoping there's no problem to be had for us to be at Galaxy's Edge over lunchtime because we really want to try all the tasty food they have there. As of now, all the offerings for food at Galaxy's Edge are not on the dining plan. So we'll be going off plan and paying out of pocket to experience all of this food. But it's important to us that we try Ronto Roasters and Docking Bay 7 and Oga's Cantina because it'll be our very first time in Galaxy's Edge and we want to try it all. And who knows when we'll be back. So no credits used for lunch, just cold hard cash. So then for dinner, we'll park over at the Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater. Again, the hubs and I did this before, but it'll be a new experience for the kiddos. I thought about going to a fancier dinner this evening at Flying Fish and using two table service credits, but ultimately decided that the kids would have more fun somewhere casual. The hubs and I will do that again some other time when it's just the two of us. So, day six. On to day seven. Back at Magic Kingdom. Snack again for breakfast. Then I'm really hoping to secure a lunchtime reservation at Be Our Guest. I mentioned in the other Disney dining video that for lunch, Be Our Guest is only a quick service credit. If you go to dinner though, be sure that you are aware that it's two table service credits, so it varies widely in that respect. But for lunch, just one quick service credit. Also, I should mention that even though it's only quick service, you still need to make an advanced dining reservation for this location. Don't expect to just be able to walk on up and get into this restaurant. It books up quickly. So that's lunch. And I'm hoping to make it an earlier lunch so that we can have an earlier dinner, dinner when we jump on a boat and head over to Wilderness Lodge for storybook dining at Artist Point. I've wanted to go here ever since I heard about it. It's character dining with Snow White, Grumpy, Dopey, and you even have a chance 
to meet the evil queen and get your picture taken with her. And the entire meal is themed around Snow White. The food looks amazing. I cannot wait. And it is only one table service credit. Hopefully it stays that way. And like I said before, hopefully I get an early enough reservation so that we can jump back on the boat and get back over to Magic Kingdom for fireworks that evening. And there you have it, day seven. Okay, so moving on to day eight. It is another down day for us. We'll be having another snack for breakfast. Quick service for lunch, followed by some time at the pool or Disney Springs. You know, I love that we can have some days where we can just wing it and figure out what we're feeling like doing that day. And then that evening, we'll head into Epcot to try out the beer garden in the Germany Pavilion. I've always wanted to try this place, and I think that my husband will really enjoy it. So that's day eight. All right, moving merrily onward to day nine. Now, you may be wondering, Melanie, you've got a lot of snack credits that are mounting up. I mean, well, wait, where's all my snack credits? Um, hold on. Um, aha, there's my snack credits. And it's pretty typical to have that be the case, that you come to the end of your vacation and still need to use up snack credits. But for me, it was a bit intentional. And let's be honest, I've only denoted snacks for breakfast so far. And certainly there'll be other times that we grab a funnel cake or cheesy fries or a cinnamon roll. So let's sprinkle some of these back over the rest of my plate. But as long as I've got four snack credits left per person by our last day, I'm happy because we'll be spending this day in Epcot. That's right, we're eating our way around the world. Now, this day will actually be my son's birthday and Epcot is where he wanted to go for his special day. So this all really worked out in my favor because we will be there during the Festival of the Arts. There will be booths at every country that offer tasty, expensive snacks. And since they run upwards of seven to nine dollars a snack, you're really getting the most out of your snack credit. So breakfast and lunch will be spent eating all around the world. And we'll have plenty, I can assure you. Then one more table service credit will be spent at Via Napoli for dinner because my son wanted pizza on his birthday. That's day nine. <sighs> So here we are, departure day. It all went so quickly, didn't it? We're going to end the week off right by using our very last quick service credit on our resort cafeteria style restaurant and get some more of those Mickey waffles. Then it's off to the airport. And as you can see here, I've got no palms left. Each palm has been accounted for. So goodbye Walt Disney World. So there you have it everybody a practical look at how you can apply the Disney dining plan. What are some of your tips and tricks to getting the most out of your Disney dining plan? And what are some of your favorite places to eat at Walt Disney World? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, please consider giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of the Disney fun. Until next time, this is Melanie from Lend Me Your Ears saying we'll chat again soon.